Officials say some 10,000 visitors were evacuated from Yellowstone, even more from surrounding communities. A limited number of visitors are now allowed back into Yellowstone National Park. And I can use it to understand how fast the gas is rising from the magma deep down and coming to the surface. Lying beneath the tranquil settings of Yellowstone National Park in the US lies an enormous magma chamber. It's responsible for the geysers and hot springs that define the area. But for scientists at NASA, it's also one of the greatest natural threats to human civilization as we know it, a potential supervolcano. According to NASA, supervolcanoes are significantly more harmful than asteroids as natural hazards to human civilization. A NASA scientist recently revealed something alarming about the Yellowstone supervolcano, as well as NASA's intentions for it. What exactly is this startling revelation and how does it affect everyone around the world, particularly those in the United States? In today's video, we'll go through this disturbing revelation in great depth. Supervolcanoes are like the supervillains of the geologic world, as stories of their looming threat grow ever more exaggerated. Massive eruptions do pose serious threats, yet there are many misconceptions about them. The United States Geological Survey classifies a volcano as super if it has produced at least one explosion that expelled more than 240 cubic miles of material, a little more than twice the volume of Lake Erie. This gives it a magnitude of 8, the highest ranking on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI, which is used to assess an eruption's explosiveness. These are massive eruptions with far-reaching consequences, ranging from avalanches of hot rock and gases racing down the volcano's flanks to worldwide climatic impacts. However, there is a crucial caveat about supervolcanoes that most people overlook. Just because a volcano has had a super eruption once or twice in the past doesn't indicate its future eruptions will be just as large. Furthermore, very few volcanoes achieve such super status. According to the USGS, None of the 5,000 eruptions with an assigned VEI that occurred over the last 10,000 years ranked as a VEI-8. While dozens of volcanoes may erupt on any given day throughout the world, scientists have documented only 42 eruptions that ranked a VEI-8 or high 7 in the last 36 million years. Yellowstone, on the other hand, is perhaps possibly the most famous of the world's volcanoes that have generated VEI-8 eruptions. This geologic behemoth has had at least three massive eruptions in its history. Two were VEI-8 super eruptions, some 2.1 million and 640,000 years ago, and one was a VEI-7, yielding around 67 cubic miles of material. The magma lurking in Yellowstone's shallow reserve is only 5 to 15 percent molten. In this sticky hot stage, an eruption normally requires at least 50 percent of gel, a lava flow, a surge of slowly moving molten rock, is more likely than an explosion. Although lava flows can endanger towns in their path or onlookers trying to get near enough to roast a marshmallow, those threats are far easier to forecast and avoid. A recent NASA study, however, reveals something unexpected about Yellowstone. Following the publication of an article about supervolcanoes last month, a group of NASA researchers released a previously unreleased report about the hazard and what could be done about it. I was a member of NASA's Advisory Council on Planetary Defense, which studied ways for NASA to defend the planet from asteroids and comets, explains Brian Wilcox of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory JPL, at the California Institute of Technology. During that study, I came to the conclusion that the supervolcano threat is substantially greater than the asteroid or comet threat. There are approximately 20 known supervolcanoes on Earth, with large eruptions occurring once every 100,000 years on average. Famine is one of the most serious threats posed by an eruption, as a prolonged volcanic winter could prevent civilization from producing enough food to feed its current population. In 2012, the United Nations estimated that global food stocks would last 74 days. When NASA scientists investigated the problem, they discovered that the most logical solution was to simply cool a supervolcano. A Yellowstone volcano is essentially a massive heat generator, producing enough energy to power six industrial power plants. 
Yellowstone currently releases 60 to 70 percent of the heat rising from below into the atmosphere through water seeping into the magma chamber via fissures. The rest settles within the magma, allowing it to dissolve additional volatile gases and minerals. When the temperature rises to a certain level, an explosive eruption is unavoidable. The supervolcano, on the other hand, would never explode if more heat could be extracted. According to NASA, if heat transport from Yellowstone's magma chamber could be increased by 35%, the park would no longer be a hazard. The only question left is how. One solution would be simply add more water to the supervolcano. However, persuading legislators to support such an endeavour would almost certainly be impossible. Building a big aqueduct uphill into a mountainous region would be both costly and difficult, and people don't want their water spent that way, Wilcox says. People are desperate for water all over the world, and so a major infrastructure project where the only way the water is used is to cool down a supervolcano would be very controversial. Instead, NASA has devised an entirely new strategy. They believe that digging up to 10 kilometers inside the supervolcano and pumping high pressure water down would be the most feasible option. The circulating water would return at a temperature of around 350 degrees Celsius, 662 degrees Fahrenheit, steadily draining heat from the volcano day by day. While such a project would cost approximately $3.46 billion, 2.69 billion pound, there is an intriguing catch that may persuade lawmakers to make the commitment. Wilcox estimates that Yellowstone emits approximately 6 GW of heat at the moment. Through drilling in this way, it could be used to create a geothermal plant which generates electric power at extremely competitive prices of around 10 cents per kilowatt hour. You would have to give the geothermal companies incentives to drill somewhat deeper and use hotter water than they usually would but you would pay back your initial investment and get electricity which can power the surrounding area for a period of potentially tens of thousands of years. And the long-term benefit is that you prevent a future supervolcano eruption which would devastate humanity. However, there are potential dangers involved in drilling into a supervolcano, specifically causing the eruption you're attempting to avoid. The most important thing with this is to do no harm, Wilcox says. If you drill into the top of the magma chamber and try to cool it from there, this would be very risky. This could make the cap over the magma chamber more brittle and prone to fracture, and you might trigger the release of harmful volatile gases in the magma at the top of the chamber which would otherwise not be released. Those who start such a project on the other hand will never see it through to completion, and they will have no idea whether it will be successful in their lifetime. Cooling Yellowstone in this manner would take tens of thousands of years and would occur at a rate of one meter per year. Although Yellowstone's magma chamber would not need to be frozen solid in order to be no longer a hazard, there is no guarantee that the endeavor would be successful for hundreds if not thousands of years. However, if a disaster is to be avoided, such long-term thinking and planning may be the only option. With a project like this, you'd start the process and the main ongoing benefit you'd see in terms of everyday benefits is this new supply of electrical power, Wilcox adds. A strategy like this could be applied to every active supervolcano on the planet and NASA scientists hope their designs will spark more practical scientific discussion and debate about how to deal with the threat. Despite these doubts, the proposal is worth considering especially given that Yellowstone is only one of about 20 supervolcanoes on the planet. NASA hopes that their proposal will spark more realistic discussions and debates about what to do about these massive structures before an eruption that could plunge the Earth into a volcanic winter. In recent years, geologists have begun to use the term super eruption to refer to explosive volcanic eruptions that eject 10,000 times the amount of magma and ash ejected by Mount St. Helens one of the most explosive eruptions in recent years. Although such a massive eruption is difficult to imagine, the Earth's surface has preserved clear traces of several massive super eruptions. Many continents have been covered in thick ash layers. Massive hollowed out calderas, craters up to 60 miles or 100 kilometers across, left when a volcano collapses after emptying its entire magma chamber at once, serve as stark reminders of previous super eruptions in Indonesia, New Zealand, the United States and Chile. The eruptions of these prehistoric supervolcanoes have devastated vast areas. 
Mount Toba in Sumatra erupted 74,000 years ago, releasing 700 cubic miles, 2,800 cubic kilometers of lava and leaving a thick layer of ash across the entire region. In comparison, the amount of magma ejected from Mount Krakatoa in Indonesia in 1883, one of the largest documented eruptions, was approximately 3 cubic miles, 12 cubic kilometers. Volcanologists are still trying to find answers to many unanswered questions about supervolcanoes. For example, what causes their eruptions and why do they wait until their magma chambers reach such enormous volumes before erupting? How does the composition compare to previous well-known eruptions? What can we do to predict when the next supervolcano will erupt? But one thing is certain, while super eruptions do occur, they are incredibly rare and the chances of one occurring in the lifetime of anyone watching this video are exceedingly small. The most recent super eruption occurred in New Zealand about 26,000 years ago. The next to most recent incident was Mount Toba's devastating eruption roughly 74,000 years ago. Geologists have discovered the traces of around 50 super eruptions, though teams are actively investigating a number of other hypotheses. That may appear to be a large number. However, one group of scientists discovered that only 1.4 super eruptions occur every million years when they computed the predicted frequency of eruptions by numbering all known supervolcanoes. That is not to say that a supervolcano will erupt on a regular basis every million years. A supervolcano may not erupt for millions of years, or numerous supervolcanoes may erupt in a short period of time. The geological record shows that supervolcanoes form in clusters, but the clusters are not regular enough to predict future eruptions. Will we witness a super eruption in our lifetime? And what do you think of NASA and its study on Yellowstone? Tell us in the comments section.